Military yes, guys, once again, this is Assault Enemy Challenge TV, raid. and we'll come back to our YouTube World channel. War II and see the weapons compared to today's weapons, it's simply mind boggling just how far advanced things are becoming. And from the looks of it, warfare is poised to become more dangerous than it ever was. From drones in the sky, drone tanks fitted with incredible weaponry, to small unmanned aircraft that are launched from carriers in the sky, security clearance has been granted. Check out these insane secret military weapons. Russia's Nuclear Tsunami Apocalypse Torpedo, Poseidon You might have heard of Russia's new weapon which was called Status 6 or Canyon. It was once thought that the weapon was a hoax until researchers tracked the development of the system which began in 2008. The torpedo was renamed Poseidon after the Russian military pulled the public for a new name although some say it should have been called the worst weapon ever. The Poseidon is said to have the ability to nuke entire coastal cities into oblivion and can trigger giant tsunamis. It is the largest torpedo ever built measuring a ridiculous 65 feet long and it's 6.5 feet in diameter. This torpedo is designed to make long treks across entire oceans before detonating a massive 100 megaton thermonuclear warhead against a coastal enemy target. That's twice the explosive power of the SAR bomber, but some say that the weapon could only have a 2 megaton warhead. Still, plenty of power to destroy a coastal city. The weapon is so big that it needs its own special submarine, but there could also be special capsules made to launch them from. Russia is also claiming that the torpedo could be used to attack enemy fleets and is estimated to be capable of speeds up to 70 knots, which translates to 80 miles per hour on land. That's faster than any U.S. nuclear-powered attack submarines and their anti-ship homing torpedoes, limiting a defender's options against an incoming Poseidon torpedo. The weapon also operates at depths of up to 3,280 feet, far deeper than U.S. Navy submarines. Drones recharged by a laser could fly forever. The Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency has developed a drone that has solar panels that are built into the wings and batteries in the fuselage. The batteries provide the power, but as they begin to drain, drone operators aim a laser beam at the solar panels which recharges the batteries. This means that the drone could stay in the air forever as long as there is an operator to charge it. This sounds cool, but there are a few problems with it. For one, a laser loses its strength the farther it has to travel and can be obscured or even blocked by smoke, haze, fog, and rain. Yeah, we know our viewers are smart, so we thought to mention that. DARPA figures it can recharge the drone at up to 6.8 miles, but that maximum will vary under real-world conditions. DARPA calls their drone the Silent Falcon, which could fly for weeks and complete a mission without ever having the need to land. China's Giant Ionosphere Zapping Radar This weapon developed by the Chinese is described as a high-powered incoherent scatter radar and is supposed to bounce radio waves off the Earth's high-altitude layers of charged gas called the ionosphere. The Chinese facility will be similar to United States HARP in many ways which had a bunch of conspiracy theories surrounding it, including government-sanctioned weather control, human-made earthquakes and tsunamis, and was said to be able to cause mental disruption throughout a region. The Chinese facility is on the densely populated island of Hainan, beside Sanya, a beachside city bigger than Miami or Honolulu with more than 400,000 inhabitants. Despite all these conspiracy theories, it is said that it could be possible the system could blank out ELF communications and selectively interfere with other satellite communications that would severely affect any submarine operations in the South China Sea. China could even use the new array as a transmitter for ELF radar to detect submarines at long range. Project Thor Although this project has some limitations with our current technology, it's something that is still on the table. We're talking about a weaponized meteor strike. In the 1950s, a Boeing operations researcher by the name of Jerry Pornell envisioned a weapon system armed not with conventional munitions or chemical explosives, 
but massive rods forged from the heavy metal tungsten, which would be dropped from suborbital heights. It was called Project Thor, but others named it Rods from God. Weapons researchers refer to it as a kinetic energy projectile, a super dense, super fast projectile that destroys everything in its path. Imagine a 2,000 pound, 20 foot long and 1 foot thick tungsten rod about the size of a telephone pole dropped on a target from space and reaching sound barrier breaking speeds. It would be capable of penetrating hundreds of feet into the Earth's crust and the destruction would be the equivalent of a nuclear blast, but without the fallout. But it has its problems because boosting enough of these into space would be very costly, and each rod itself would cost $600,000. But there is a rumor that the Pentagon is still looking at this weapon. Juliet Marine Systems Ghost the Ghost is an advanced supercavitating stealth ship that reduces hull friction to 1 900th that of conventional watercraft. The Ghost uses a gyro-stabilized dual pontoon supercavitating hull that can run at top speeds through 10-foot waves. Called the Small Water Plane Area Twin Hull, or SWATH, it is controlled by 22 computer-controlled underwater control surfaces. When at rest or moving slowly, the Ghost sits in the water on its centerline module. At 8 knots or faster, the high-grade marine aluminum buoyant hulls lift the vessel and achieve full stability. Propulsion on the prototype is provided by T-53-703 turboshaft engines and can achieve speeds over 30 knots, but could be capable of 50 knots. It can perform several different missions including anti-surface warfare anti-submarine warfare, and mine countermeasures. Armament consists of the M197 20mm rotary cannon and launch tubes that expel exhaust downward between the struts of the swath holes, concealing and dissipating the thermal signature of the launch of BGM-176B Griffin missiles and advanced precision kill weapon system rockets. The Ghost has a crew of three to five sailors and can be dismantled to fit in the C-17 Globemaster III for transport. Each Ghost ship costs around $10 million to produce, a drop in the bucket for comparative military vessels. Sea Dragon Weapon The U.S. Navy and an unknown defense contractor are working on a new missile the service says will give its submarines a new disruptive offensive capability to take on enemy ships. It's called the Sea Dragon, but no one is really sure what it is because it's top secret. However, it is known that the missile uses some current technology and could be the SM-6, which is designed to be launched by U.S. Navy Arleigh Burke-class destroyers and Ticonderoga-class cruisers to defend the fleet from cruise missiles, manned aircraft, unmanned aircraft, and even short-range ballistic missiles. The missile's only drawback is, originally designed to shoot down flying targets, it has a fairly small blast fragmentation warhead. The SM-6 is supersonic and can fly at 3.5 times the speed of sound, or about 2,685 miles an hour. It also has the fun trick of taking targeting data from other Navy assets, including the E-2D Advanced Hawkeye Airborne Early Warning and Control Aircraft and the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter. So imagine a missile that can be fired from a ship and then controlled by a fighter jet and then directed to hit its target. Kalashnikov Drone Tank Military drones are on the rise, and many of you are probably familiar with the unmanned U.S. Predator drones that are equipped with advanced targeting systems and can carry 500-pound bombs and deliver those weapons to the target accurately. With this in mind, it would seem logical that ground-based drones, such as the Kalashnikov drone tank, would be the next-generation weapon to enter warfare. Russia's Euron-9 combat drone packs some serious firepower. With one 30mm 2A72 automatic cannon and four 9M120-1 Attica anti-tank guided missiles, it is 16.7 feet long and weighs approximately 10 tons. It may look impressive, but it had trouble with the fundamentals, not only of armored warfare, but warfare by remote control. 
The remote control combat vehicle lost contact with ground control stations only 1,000 to 1,600 feet from its manned control station, suffered from an unreliable gun and suspension system, and could not target enemies while on the move. The remote fire control system is also a problem, with the 2A72 experiencing a lag before firing six times and an outright failure once. The drone tank was first tested in Syria, and despite its failures, could be a weapon that Russia continues to develop. Tank Killing Quadcopter Drone The armed forces of Belarus have demonstrated a new quadcopter drone that can carry a tank-killing rocket launcher which carries an RPG-26 single-shot rocket that is remotely fired by the drone operator. While the drone is of questionable effectiveness as a tank destroyer, it is a deadly harbinger of things to come on the unmanned battlefield. The type of drone is unknown, but the design appears to be a quadcopter capable of lifting at least 7 pounds. But the RPG it can carry has a range of about 250 yards, and the warhead it has can penetrate a 1.7-foot thick plate of rolled homogeneous steel armor, which is the standard metric for armor plating. However, the RPG-26 can't penetrate enough armor to take out an American M1 Abrams main battle tank, at least not head-on anyway, and it probably can't penetrate the M1's flank armor either, but a rocket-firing drone could conceivably maneuver to shoot at the top or rear of a tank, where armor is thinnest. The Belarusian tank drone is the start of what could become a very uncomfortable trend for Western tankers. Iron Curtain With the name of Iron Curtain, you might think this is a secret Russian military weapon, but it's not. The U.S. Army is testing a system designed to protect military vehicles smaller than tanks from attacks. This Iron Curtain uses a combination of sensors and downward-firing projectiles to stop incoming rockets and missiles from striking vehicles by setting off their shaped charge warheads before making contact with its target. With the Iron Curtain installed, the vehicle is surrounded with radar and optical sensors. The outward-looking radar picks up any incoming missiles as they approach, while the optical sensors spot it in milliseconds before impact and trigger the downward-firing interceptors. The U.S. Army tested the Iron Curtain back in 2013, and it apparently got a perfect score. So, it's been tested against rocket-propelled grenades, but how it fared against anti-tank missiles remains top secret. Gremlins Aircraft Carriers the idea of an aircraft carrier that operates in the air is not a new idea. And aside from the fictional flying aircraft carrier, the Helicarrier, which appeared in the American comic books published by Marvel Comics, it would seem that this is an impossible feat. But not so fast. The Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency has selected defense contractor Dynetics to develop a small unmanned aircraft which can be launched from any warplane and even recovered in mid-air. These small aircraft are codenamed Gremlins and are tiny, dangerous armed drones which are reusable and reconfigurable. The Gremlins could be launched from the rails of an F-16, the internal weapons bay of a B-1B bomber, or out the cargo ramp of a C-130 transport. Once the drones have accomplished their mission, they will rendezvous with the C-130 Hercules that lowers a capture device. The Gremlins are then hooked powered off, and then hauled aboard the aircraft. They can be quickly refurbished, refueled, perhaps receive an armament swap, and then be ready for another mission within 24 hours. If anything, it's a very similar concept to the Protoss carrier in the game StarCraft. Carrier has arrived. We hope you enjoyed this video and want to know what you thought about these and which was your favorite. If you liked the video, don't forget to target the subscribe button and launch notifications so you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thanks for watching.